Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the organic farming. Nowadays, the organic farming term is very much being popular. But if we see from our forefathers' history, the organic farming is not a very new to the India. Previously or traditionally, our forefathers doing agriculture by organic means only. But over the years, due to the enhancement of population and to food more people, the, we have used different types of fertilizers and pesticides. But due to the indiscriminate use of fertilizer and pesticides, the factor product has been reduced. There is lots of issue and soil and water quality. So again, there is a need to remodify our organic farming. And nowadays, we are going for a scientific organic farming. So in this topic, I will deliver mostly what is the organic farming, what is the different types of organic farming, its principle, its definition what is the scope, what is the constraint and how to weigh out for a better future. If you see, I just want to quote a great proverb of our nation's father, Mahatma Gandhi, to a man with an empty stomach, food is the God. So there is too much immense importance of the food in our human civilization and for our existence. If we see, the farming is the most important activity of our just for our livelihood. This is not only produce the enough quality of the food for our all the generations, but we have to also produce the quality food to feed. It is also giving the finance because most of our consumers, if we see for our India, more than 60 percent peoples are directly or indirectly are dependent on the agriculture. So, if the agriculture production is hampered in any part of the chain, so, their consumer capacity is also reduced. So, they, the farming feeds the world. Also, there is different type of technology. Nowadays, agriculture is going to be commercialized. There are lots of different types of instrument has come and lots of value addition and processing is come. Previously, we are getting only the bread. Now, from the same wheat, we are producing different types of secondary food products and which is very much popular. So, farming is very much important today and it will be very much important for also tomorrow. And if we see, now everyone we know about the climate change. For some people may be, be just telling climate change is a natural phenomenon, but climate change is not a natural phenomenon. Yes, the weather as the climate, they have changed over for hundreds or thousands of years. But if we see for last 40 or 50 years, the change in the capacity of the climate or weather is tremendous. Because if we see the temperature increase, suppose in the last 100 years, temperature has increased by 0 0.8 to 0.9 degree. Many people can send 0.8 or 0.9, it is a very just minimal increase. But for this 0.9 or 1 degree increase in the global temperature, the repercussions is very high. Previously, suppose in an area of Rajasthan, the rainfall is only 300 millimeter. But nowadays in a single day, they are getting more than 200 millimeter of rainfall. So, there is, there is too much of just flood or maybe of soil loss. Similarly, in some area, we are getting rainfall more than 3000 millimeter per year. But due to this climate change events, the rainfall has been reduced to 2500. And most important thing is not the total amount of rainfall, only is the distribution of the rainfall. Previously, suppose there is 50 rainy days, but nowadays we are getting 40 rainy days. And in a single day, we are getting too much rain. That rain is not important for the agriculture, nor for the conservation purpose, but that making too much flood. And if we see when the temperature is increased, it also increases the insect pest load, disease load and also it is good to the water, nutrient and energy scarcity. So, we have to be very much ready for our future climate change and there should be some agricultural techniques in our hand to mitigate the projected climate change or if we cannot mitigate in so much amount the climate change effect. So, we can adopt our agriculture in such a way. So, if there is some temperature increase or there is some rainfall, uncertainty will be there, but our agricultural production will not hamper. 
So, if we see, we know this is the conventional agricultural system and visa vis we are also discussing about the organic farming. In conventional agricultural system, in the years of 1960, when we just got the independence, our fruit production was very low. It was just 50 million ton and we have 33 crore of population. And we are not dependent on the full shape sufficiency. See, in that condition, we have to purchase additional fruit from the foreign countries. Then the green revolution comes in the era of 1960 to 1970. We get very good quality seeds of high yielding varieties. And for this high yielding varieties production, we need so much of fertilizer and irrigation. So, due to the higher fertilizer use, higher irrigation use and improved agronomic management practices, the productivity of the most of the crop has increased tremendously. And nowadays, we are very happy to tell this year our current food level production is more than 300 million ton. So, food production had increased by 6 times over the last 70 years. This is a remarkable achievement for the government of India. But what happened in certain pockets of India, in certain parts of India, we are using fertilizer and fertilizer and we have forget the use of our traditional practices of agriculture like giving the organic manure and giving the organic just all other fertilizer. So, what happened? There is lots of demerits and which I will discuss in the later part. If we see in our conventional part, our most emphasis was for the yield and also the nutritional quality. But we have given very little attention for the soil quality, for the biodiversity. Biodiversity not exist in the jungles or in the oceans. Biodiversity is everywhere. In the soil, there are lots of bacteria, there are lots of fungi, lots of earthworms and our protozoa and animals is there. So, when we continuously use some inorganic fertilizer in a very high days over the years, so their biodiversity has been decreased. And if we see the water pollution is coming because too much we are giving the nitrogen, that nitrate leaching has going and it has caused to the eutrophication. Versus when we go to the organic production, what is our main emphasis? If you can see, if our main emphasis is this the, not only the yield, but also the nutritional quality and also the minimum pesticide ratio. If we see nowadays consumer also prefers too much less minimum residue because suppose inorganic pesticides is not too much bad if we are using in a very adequate and scientific manner. But in most of the cases for due to some profits or some unscientific use, farmers or some middlemen they are using pesticide just before harvesting of the crops. And this residue is very much dangerous not only for our health, but also in all era of life. So, in organic, we, as we cannot use any inorganic pesticide, we have to mostly dependent on the biological pest control and some plant based products, there is a minimal chance of pesticide residue. It also has the ecosystem services, because in nature, not only the human exists, there are lots of thousands and lakhs of plants biota is there, also animal kingdom is there and the earth is for all. So, we have to think for all the ecosystem services and in organic farming also we have to promote different type of croppings like crop rotation, green man manure, legume incorporation. And if we see when we do the conventional agricultural system to its maximum extent, most of the cases previously farmers are used diversified crop. So, they are using different types of pulses, different types of legumes and they have a very high root binding quality. But when we are going for monoculture, only rice and rice later part of the wheat and these two are very high yielding, we are getting more 10 ton per hectare by rice and wheat. So, when they have also taken too much nutrient from the soil and when we are not diversifying with legumes and other things, after certain years the lands become very much disturbed. There is too much of due to the less cover of soil, there is too much of erosion and the gully formation and probably in certain parts due to the indiscriminate use of this technology, maybe after 30 or 40 years, the soil not be sufficiently able to feed our future generation. And this soil is not ours. This soil we have bore from our just forefathers and we have to give this soil in a very good quality to our future generation. And if you see this is the different type of land degradation in India, the most of the land degradation of India is by the water erosion is more than 70 percent. And if we see the wind erosion is 11 percent. And there are a lot of faulty agricultural practices. This agricultural practice is very less amount of organic manure because people can ask what is the relation between organic manure and the land degradation. This organic manure is a very high capacity, they have a very high surface area 
and when the surface area is high, they can hold the nutrient very tightly in their periphery. So, in this condition, the nutrient loss from the soil due to a very high rain or wind erosion is very less. And when the soil physical structure, that is the bulk density, soil infiltration rate, soil permeability, water hydraulic conductivity is increased due to the addition of organic matter, the plant growth is increased and also the soil aggregate stability is increased. And so when, when the soil aggregate, it is better or stable aggregates, it is not easily washable by wind or by air. So, by in this condition, by using organic farming and addition of organic manures and others, we can reverse the process of land degradation because if this is the process and by this way land degradation is going to happen in India, then probably we have, we will lose many more fertile land in your future and it will be very tough to just keep your future population. So, there is a mission has started from our government of India that is National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture and this is very much important. Now, one term it is the sustainable agriculture. What is the meaning of sustainable agriculture? Sustainable agriculture mean, means we will produce the food in enough quantity to not only the meet the demand of the today, but also the future generation, but without disturbing or detouring the soil and also without disturbing the ecosystem on the environment. So, our technology, agricultural technology should be like that, we will get enough food, quality food, soil fertility will be managed and this technology will be economically viable, so that farmers will get too much profit and there will be very less hazard to the environment. Because if environment is not good, if environment is disturbed, so all our whatever the we are just animals living in this planet will be disturbed. So, we have to take care of the environment also. So, now I am coming to the just bookish definition of the organic farming. If we go the USDA definition that is the United States Department of Agriculture telling that organic farming is avoids or largely excludes the synthetic inputs. What are the synthetic inputs? Maybe fertilizer, it may be pesticides, it may be different type of hormones or plant growth regulators and feed additives. And maximum extent, we have to rely upon the crop rotation, residues, animal manures, off-farm organic waste and biological system. This definition is a little bit narrow definition. Here we are only telling what is permitted in the organic agriculture, what is not permitted, what we can use, what we cannot use. But if we see the definition given by the food and agricultural organization, the organic agriculture is a unique production system which promotes and enhance agro ecosystem health. So, it is not a isolated approach, organic farming is a individual not approach, it is a holistic approach. So, we have to take into consideration whole farm or the whole ecosystem within us, including the biodiversity. So, biodiversity of plants, biodiversity of animals, biodiversity of earth, earth animals, also the earthworms and soil biological activity, because within soil lots of beneficial microorganisms is there. There may be some micronutrients, maybe they are fixing nitrogen, maybe some are solubilizing the phosphorus and that helps in the plant growth. And that can be accomplished we by use the proper agronomic, biological and mechanical methods. So, in this definition we try to promote the ecosystem health and the environmental sustainability by the FAO. If we see our agriculture has started a long back, just 10,000 years below. If we see before 10,000 years, we are mostly hunters and gatherers. People have collected here and there lots of fruits and other. Then the people try to go for settle cultivation, they want to settle some river basin. So, when they settle in a particular area, they need food. So, in that condition, they have started agriculture, maybe some wheat, barley and some own crops. At that time, organic, the agriculture is totally organic, but I can tell it is a traditional one. Hardly they are using any manure and other things, but when the population has pressure has increased and you have to give too much more than 7 billion people in the world to give you food, there is a need of different type of fertilizer and pesticide come into the picture. But when we are using not in combining with the organic manure, we are forgetting the use of organic manure and other things on our field, so environment and, and health issues come and due to some profit maximization policies from some persons, the health issue is major concern and the pesticide issue. So, again due to the consumer awareness and preference, the we are again shifting to the organic agriculture. So, if we see generally in our present day agriculture, 
we are most income our most one motivate is the yield so for getting the high quality yield we are using too much fertilizer pesticide energy and everything so what we have done we have done the loss of soil productivity what is soil productivity i just tell suppose previously when the fertilizers came suppose we are using some urea or dap to get some rice or wheat if we are using 1 kilo of urea or dap we are getting maybe 30 or 40 kilo of rice or grain extra yield but over the years whenever we using the same amount of fertilizer we are not getting that incremental yield for that getting of incremental yield we have to use more amount of fertilizer and fertilizer so this the that is the also if you see productivity has been decrease then stagnation of fall yield production this is also after certain point we are not getting any extra yield so our yield has not increased and if we see the increase in input cost if you see the fertilizer and all the others this mainly dap urea these are highly subsidized by the government of india we are probably in urea we are getting a very less less than 10 rupees a kilo but if there is a government subsidy is reduced or government has taken the withdraw the subsidy this cost will be very high and government has spending every year 1000 and 1000 rupees crores rupees in this subsidy so there is a need of shifting from trade is just nowadays inorganic agriculture to tower integrated agriculture or some areas where the organic carbon is very high the soil is good and there is a scope of the domestic market also for the export potential we should also promote the organic farming if we see this is a times of india bangalore in 2013 they have just analyzed different type of food products from the samples from the market and most of the things if you see if you see in case of brinjal the hepatochlor one is insecticide his residue is allowable only 0.48 and if you see how much about the legitimate level more than 860 percent than the safe level so if you see also the cabbage okra cauliflower the pesticide load is very high and when the pesticide is load very high suppose in the off season cultivation if you grow this cold crops like cabbage cauliflower broccoli everyone is like this crops if you growing in the month of winter like december january february or march definitely due to the very low temperature pests are very less but nowadays in market you are getting this type of vegetable throughout the year so when you crop, grow these type of crops in the summer season or in the rainy season the pest and insect attack is very high and to control this we have to compel too much pesticide use and when you, there is a some residual time if a farmer suppose is using any pesticide on other things there is a minimum time of 10 or 15 days maybe crop very to crop to crop so you cannot take the harvest but if we using today the same pesticide and tomorrow we are plucking the food and sell in the market then definitely that is a tremendous health hazard so what is the message soils are suffering from the nutrient fatigue soil fertility is declining atmosphere is little bit polluted so organic farming in this a has help can help us to not only quality provide the quality food but also they had just improve the fertility of the soil so that our future generation can get also the good quality yield and good fruit without disturbing also the environment so but there is one thing certification is very much needed unless you certify a single product you cannot claim it is organic why this certification is necessary because if there is no certification everyone can take their purchase from their field they can just produce and directly come to the market and they can claim it is organic produce so there should be some rules and regulation so that there should not be any adulteration process so organic certification mostly is a process based certification but there is some steps and rules and regulation when when the rules and regulation has been completed and farmers or a producer has fulfilled certification is given by different government and non government organization and after that it is ready to sell in the market with organic certified logo and there are different type of certification is there that i will discuss later so if you see organic that's why organic agriculture also sometime called biological agriculture it called the ecological agriculture because it also very much important our traditional conservation farming methods with the modern farming technology because if you see our tradition everything is not very bad our forefathers also have they have achieved something some technical knowledge over the years from their years and years 
So there is some techniques if we can blend it, if we can mix our this old traditional knowledge along with the modern farming technology so that we can make agriculture more profitable and sustainable. So it emphasizes the rotating crops. What is mean rotating crops? Suppose every year I am growing rice, rice, rice. So whatever the insect, pest or disease, just causal organism is there, they take in the soil. They, and next time they are multiplying more and insect at will be more. But suppose this year we are growing rice, next year we are growing rice some probably legumes, maybe oil side or some vegetable. If there is crop rotation, so that insect and pest load will be less. Similarly, suppose rice crops, this is cereal crops, these are heavy feeder, they take too much nutrient from the soil. While if you grow pea or any legume, they fix atmospheric nitrogen from the air and they fix the nitrogen in the form of a nodules by the help of a rhizobium bacteria in the soil. So, soil fertility is increased. Similarly, some crop are very short rooting. If you see some crop is just they are most of the root in the surface only. So, in organic farming also we can use the modern equipment, improve cob varieties, soil and water conservation measures. So, what is the crop varieties is very much important in organic farming because we are producing and we are developing different type of varieties. So, previously our yield was very low. Nowadays, due to the introduction of different type of hybrids and high yielding varieties, our yield is high. But if we see some varieties may be perform very well under the inorganic or integrated management system, but the same variety probably may not well fit under the organic farming. So, whenever we promote some varieties for the farmers in the recommendation, we have to analyze, we have to evaluate which variety is coming well under the organic farming and definitely the variety which are pest and disease resistant, they will be better adapted to the organic farming due to the less incidence of pest and disease attacks. So, this is the positive side of agriculture, one is the better quality pesticide residue food, improve with the soil properties, soil bug density, soil infiltration rate, hydraulic conductivity, the soil is very much important. Unless the soil physical condition will be good, the soil cannot store the nutrients and there will be very much surface runoff and the soil erosion automatically our nutrients will be leased. Similarly, also the soil loss by erosion can be reduced because erosion is a very much problem in certain parts of India, especially in the northeastern region of India. Because in that part of India, there is we are getting more than 3000, 4000 up to 10,000 millimeter of rainfall in a particular year and there is a chance of soil loss up to 70 to 80 ton per hectare. And if this scale the soil loss is going, probably after 20 or 30 years, there will not be top soil. And if we know there is a thousand years needed to produce just a small one centimeter of soil. So, soil is very precious, we have to conserve the soil. And also it is, if you see that is the biochemical and ecological characteristic by improve also by the agriculture. So, in organic farming better than the quality and soil also we are nourishing the environment and we are keeping the environment safe for our future generation. But there is some concerned areas. People will tell definitely they will ask there is a different type of research work has been done throughout the globe and just I want to confirm one publication from our very prestigious journal this in nature. They have done the meta analysis of thousands of research work has been done of the agriculture. So, what will be the yield? Because a farmer's ultimate goal is the yield. He will not directly think to the soil system fertility or maybe in the direct the ecosystem services. So, thousand and thousand research they have compared what they were yield under the conventional system and what is the yield under the organic system. And they have reduced that about 8 to 20 percent lower yield has been recorded in the organic system. So, they are telling, we are taking the average of the world meta analysis, for some crop it may be 8 percent lower yield in organic, some case of 20 percent. But in the second line is very much important, with certain crops, growing condition and management practices, organic system come closer to the conventional system. So, this reduction is not for universal. If we can maintain very well scientific organic package of practices, if we go for particular crops, probably some crops may not fit for organic agriculture. So, we have to, to take that type of crops which is very much fit to the organic agriculture. Some soil maybe is not so fertile, organic carbon is very low, 
0.3 or 0.4 percent. So, in that condition we should not promote the agriculture, but in the condition where in the northeast part of India, where the soil ergonomic carbon is 1.5 to 3 percent, we should promote organic agriculture in that part. So, there is a, this is the advantage of the organic farming and farmers and consumers are ready to pre pay premium price. So, agriculture should be allowed for the export oriented and some, some niche area where there is farmers are already using very less amount of organic insecticide or fertilizer or in some of the high value crops. So, there is a high export demand of the organic and if we see one research has been done in our experimental fund of ICI research complex NEH that is Meghalaya after 7 years of the establishment. So, it is called initial 2 or 3 years in under organic farming your yield may be little bit less, but when the system is stable we have seen if you can see we are growing carrot that is french bean, potato and tomato and if you see for carrot and french bean there is no yield difference 100 percent on organic and integrated, integrated mod 50 percent through organic beans and 50 percent through the inorganics the yield are at par, yield are same. While in case of potato and tomato over 7 years we have seen 100 percent organic yield is giving little bit extra than the integrated management. So, it is not always right if you grow organic your yield will be lower. It always very much subjected to the crop, to the soil and to the management condition which a farmers actually use. And if we can promote, we can manage the soil very well after 3 or 4 years our yield level will be at par. So, this is the objective of organic farming that is the promote use of natural pesticides. Natural pesticide mean there is very important tree in India that is neem. And if, our, if you go our old Vedas and others Upanishad there is a nomenclature there is a use of this neem tree. And nowadays this neem oil is being extracted from the fruits and that is a very high insecticidal and propositidal value. If you also see the urea, if you give nitrogen to the fertilizer anywhere generally most of the nitrogen is being lost. But nowadays this neem coated urea, neem is mixed with the urea so that this urea also release slowly. So, this neem plant has a very tremendous use. Similarly, there are lots of other plants which we can explore in the organic farming. Also, we have to the control disease paste weeds under the organically and increase the genetic diversity. Always organic farming should not be promoted for a particular crop in a very huge area like this. Organic farming should be promoted for a farm approach where a farmers can grow different type of crops, different activities and also in along with the livestock or cattle or pig or poultry not in isolation. We have things that we have just to work out the produce. We have grown different type of crops in our organic farm and if we see the tomato the quality parameters like ascorbic acid, if you see the reducing sugar, total sugar and the lycopene content. You also know the lycopene content is you got the color of the tomato is red due to the lycopene. So, most of these high quality parameter is better under 100 percent organic. So, it is not only in the book that organic farming produce quality is good, but in our experimental farm we have also seen that organic farming is always good for the quality purpose. So, there is some issue of the yield level, but with science, scientific management of practices and for a particular crop I think we can manage at par yield as compared to the conventional or integrated nutrient management. Also, I want to share one slide from the Gomiru et al. 2011. It covers the overall quality assessment of the organic farming. And if we see there is different type of signature, suppose this is double plus, double plus matlab this system organic farming is much better than the conventional system for some particular parameter. One plus matlab better, but uh, minus is matlab negative, matlab organic farming is not doing well for some particular things. And if we see our ground and surface water nitrate leaching and pesticides. So, definitely nitrate leaching is a very much factor if the nitrogen which are applying in the field is directly coming to the water. So, there is a nitrate leaching and there is a chance of the nitrate level if you increase in the water and that water is coming to our drinking system there is some disease called in baby is called blue baby syndrome and that is very much problematic disease. So, we have to always take care of our drinking water and we have to think whatever the fertilizer or anything we are using in the agriculture that should not really directly come into our drinking water purpose. Then if you see the nitri greenhouse gas emission, I think everyone know nowadays greenhouse gas emission CO2, carbon dioxide, methane and if we see previously our CO2 is 
that is the ppm concentration i only 200 atpm 100 years to 200 years back but nowadays it is more than 400 ppm and due to the enhancement of these greenhouse gases our global temperature has been increased because this is the gases which trap the incoming solar radiation and in this condition organ nowadays lots of research has been doing and this is from the united nations climate change protocol and other protocol there is a tremendous pressures of our all the developing and developed countries to reduce their carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emission and organic farming if you see the ghg per hectare it is very good as it is reducing the greenhouse gas emission as compared to the because in nitrogen suppose you are giving nitro nitrogen but nitrate and that is nitrous oxide N2O that global warming potential is 320 as compared to the carbon dioxide. So, if you see this is the animal welfare health, health is also very much important and we have also the quality fruit like pesticide residue, residue is very much less in organic farming. So, there may be some negative point may be energy. So, people are kind of telling because organic always organic this is bulky in manure to provide a 50 kilo nitrogen you can give just 110 or 15 kilo of urea, but giving the same 50 kilo nitrogen through your organic manure, you have to give in 10 ton per hectare. So, there is a most huge amount you have to carry, there may be some transportation cost, but with the use of different type of newer technologies and also the crop rotation, legume incorporation and with some new idea or protocol, our organic farming should be more beneficial for the farmers. If you see in our all field we have been this is the soil organic carbon. Soil organic carbon is just like our blood. If the organic carbon in the soil is very good, the soil may be tail is fertile because carbon also has nitrogen some similar just ratio 10 is to 1. So, if we see in our just UP, if you see the daily organic carbon is very low 0.4 to 0.5 percent. So, that is why farmers have to give huge amount of urea and other fertilizers, but if you some other area in other condition where organic carbon is 0 0.1, 0 0.5 to 3 percent. So, that condition is little bit we are fertile. If you see our condition also tell if you go 100 percent organic your soil organic carbon enhancement in increase. Similarly, also the BD, the bug density will be reduced and other thing. So, always this soil parameter is also significantly influenced by the organic manures and if you see the world of organic agriculture 2018. So, this is just recent data more than 186 countries are doing, but most area is the Oceania. Oceania is mean that is the Australia. Majority area of the organic farming Australia followed by the Europe and some other parts. And if we see the largest country is Australia, they are promoting the organic farming in the world. But if you see global market, because market is the ultimate determined field. They, nowadays, if you go to the US and other things, suppose you are taking normal milk may be a 2 dollar per just 1 gallon for your normal milk, but if you purchase 1 to organic, it is minimum 8 to 10. So, people are ready to give extra money for their quality produce. And if you see out of the 95 global market, 42 percent market is the USA and 39 percent of the European Union. And in this condition in India, where we have a very good quality soil and farmers are also using very less amount of fertilizer and with the modern scientific technology, we can get this market. So, there is a hen of opportunity for our farmers and also our producer to get this huge amount of foreign exchange by promoting export in organics. If we see in under condition of India as a now, we have just around 2.86 million hectares. So, apart from that generally about mostly is the organic and uh, if you see our just vision organic farming is very high enthusiastic. So, if we see our organic farming generally we have only area is very less only 2.8 million hectare. Our total agriculture whatsoever is land is available that is the arable land only 2.8 million hectare is under the organic farming only 2 percent area, but our policy is there. So, we have to go <coughs> for minimum 10 percent of the cultivable land who is not going to the promote organic agriculture throughout India. So, there may be a problem of food security and other issue, but our government of India is trying to minimum 10 percent of the total land for the organic. And if we see for that our target is by two, 2025 is 6 million hectare. So, we have to 2.5 million hectare additional is needed to organic farming, so that we can supply for our domestic market and also we can export to other countries. If we see the history of agri agriculture, 
the scientific organic agriculture, not our old age traditional agriculture, that is the credit goes to Sir Albert Howard and he was a just in the early 90s, he just uh, emphasized the use of animal manure, cover crop, rotation and biologically use of insect and pest control. Although organic farming has been practiced in India in thousands of years, but due to the post-independence and the green revolution era, we have too much dependent on the fertilizer and other pesticides. So, nowadays again, our government of agriculture as well as the Indian Council of Agricultural Research is doing multi-station and multi-location organic farming research to how to do scientifically organic farming to give the quality food, but without reducing the yield level. So, the concept of the organic farming is work as closely as possible to the close cycle. Close cycle if you see, yeah, there is different types of cycle. So, whenever we give plants, plant take nutrient from the soil. So, our main emphasis should be there in a farm, when you are growing some crop, most of the nutrients or most of the input should be generated within the farm. So, that farmers have to be very less dependent from the outside. And whatever the crop residue may be maize straw, rice straw, your vegetable extract that should be throw out of the farm that you can again come back to the soil either as a mulch or as a compost or any other form so that your soil biodiversity always can be maintained. We have to also promote some tillage practices that is not too much against our soil disturbing. Suppose every year you are going four, five plowing of soil, the soil is little bit disturbed, there is too much wind and water erosion. So, there is concept is come is the zero tillage where a farmers probably they are growing rice with the tillage and after that they can go for lentil or chickpea or pea without tilling by opening a small furrow in between rice crops and they can go in the second crop. And this second fertility crop mostly should be preferential of the legumes, so they can biological nitrogen fixation will be there and this way the soil fertility can be enhanced. If you see Ronnie including our man also use the reduction of the fossil fuel because if you know for production of this urea or DAP, there are need of huge amount of energy. This energy is come either form of coal or maybe diesel or petrol. So, in the future generation, these all are not just uh, renewable energy. All uh, maybe after 100 years, our coal reserve will be limited, our uh, all the world's uh, fossil fuels, maybe petroleum will be finished. So, we have to also think of the renewable energy sources for and that is why we have not too much dependent only on the inorganic fertilizer. We have to also promote organic farming and also the integrated nutrient management side by side. Then if we see, we have to give provide all the animals the living conditions because this earth is not only for us, earth is for everyone's property. So, we have to make assure that all the plants animals and also the microorganisms can live in a harmony. Because if the harmony is a disturbed, then every life will be disturbed. And we have seen last two years, what is the going on the COVID-19 and the what is the infection. When there is some balance or something is disturbed, we have to face the consequences. So, always we have to ready for our future. So, in organic chemical, no GMO that is genetically modified crop, no synthetic fertilizer, we have to only reduce the organic fertilizer. And you have also that it will increase the soil organic matter, water holding capacity and this is the soil food wave. If we say, if you show the a jungle, if you go to the some ocean in the discovery channel or animal planet, this always showing different types of animals and others there. But generally we did not see the within the soil in our naked eye. And if you see within the soil how much animal is there, there is nematode, there is arthropods, there is animals, some rodent and some small animals, some protozoa, fungi and plant and these all are interconnected. Nematode attack the plant roots, then plants then the provide, then general lots of fungi is also there, some arthropod is also dependent on these fungi. So, what about the trophic level? What are the our initial level? That is the first trophic level is the photosynthesizer who are producing the foods, mainly the plants. Secondary that is the decomposer, this is the second trophic level. And if you the higher and higher trophic levels you go, suppose in case of jungle also, grass is initial level, after that the deer is taking the grass, after that lion is eating the deer. So, there is a trophic chain always going on, light in our soil food oil, the same system is there. So, this is the IFOAM, that is the International Federation of Organic Agricultural Movement. So, this is the a very important body which 
have fixed the different type of standards, rules and regulation for organic farming in the world. And every country have to follow certain rules and regulation to go your organic produce international market or sell. So, different type of principles is there, more major principle is principle of health, ecology, principle of fairness and care. Now, I am coming, what is the principle of health? It means the health of the individual and community cannot be separated from the health of the ecosystem. If your soil health is not good, if your water health is not good, if the soil is polluted, if your water is polluted, so probably whatever the food is being cultivated on that area will be polluted. And same when food you come to your body, your human health also will be affected. So, in part organic agriculture, so need to produce high quality nutritious feed. So, that not only will grip up the grow, but because these all the fruits and vegetables have different type of nutraceuticals and phytochemicals and secondary metabolism is there. So, in when we take in a ample quantity and with good quality food, our defense mechanism of the body, if we see in the COVID-19 situation is there, the persons whose body's immunity is very good, he survived better or he has not affected so much, but when your immune system or when your defense system is little bit compromised, so definitely all the other disease will attack you first. Similarly, the principle of ecology. So, ecology is the different types of plants, animals, how they can live within a system in a close integrity without disturbing the each other. So, what we have to input should be used by reuse. Suppose, suppose we have using growing rice. After rice, rice straw is generally the waste product. So, what we do? And there is cow dung. Cow dung is the waste product of the dairy industry. But if we mix the one waste product that is cow dung with the one waste product that is rice straw and with some package with earthworms, that can be converted into very good quality vermicompost. And that vermicompost can be again given to the soil back. So, there is always we have to prefer the reuse, recycling, just like plastic bottles. So, whatever the farm produce is coming out, if we, we recycle, so there will be very less garbage or there will be very less uh, extra product so that we are not polluted, polluting the environment. Similarly, is the fairness. So, generally, that generally, if you grow for the high input agricultural cultivation. If you go to the other countries, 1000 and 100 hectares for a particular farm, they need very high quality machinery, very big, big machine and very th thousand of thousand bags of fertilizer. So, this agriculture is little bit very high costly. A small and marginal farmer, farmer who is living in some particular hill in a remote area, he cannot purchase all these things, pesticides and other things very costly. But if we promote organic farming in his farm, in such a way with a crop diversification, crop rotation and different type of activities, so that he can produce most of the nutrient demand of his farm within the farm, then he have to be very less dependent on the others. So, this is the natural of fairness. So, it should provide everybody a good quality of life, food sovereignty and reduction of the poverty. Another is the principle of care. So, that uh, this principle state that precaution and responsibility are the key concern. So, we have to be take care of health, we have to take care of your, our body, we have to take care of our, our quality of the produce, we have to take care of the ecosystem, we have to take care of the soil fertility. So, these are the generally different principle of organic farming. But one thing is conversion of land. This is a very important factor, conversion of land, that is the first point, because in a area where farmers are using inorganic fertilizer and they are bearing high input huge agriculture size in Punjab and Haryana for rice followed by wheat. So, and yield is very high. So, if to maintain the very high level of yield, you have to give too much of fertilizer and other things. So, immediately if you go to convert that inorganic area to organic area, it will not be possible because there is need of too much of organic manure, your soil may, may not be responsive immediately. So, there is a conversion period and it is generally believed with our scientific study, initial 3 to 5 years, if you convert some inorganic area or high input use agriculture to organic agriculture, your yield may be reduced. But after 3 to 5 years, when your soil fertility enhanced to a particular level, you can get the same or at per level. Similarly, the management of the entire surrounding system, 
we always promote agriculture not in isolation for a particular crop or particular livestock. If always we promote organic farming in a integrated approach, in a farming system approach, so that different type systems of biodiversity, different components of within the ecosystem can be synergy with each other. And if we see better plant protection and livestock management is important also. There are some choice in crops and varieties. There is different type of logo is there, India Organic or Joybik Bharat. So, one thing is all seeds and plant materials should be certified organic. If the organic seed is not available, then under our national standards of organic farming, you can use other seeds, but that should not be chemically treated. In then that you have to see when certified organic seed and plant materials are not available, that I am telling chemically is available. Genetic engineer food, you have heard the name of different types of Bt cotton. Because previously in India, our in case of cotton, there is a insect pest attack is too high. So, what our scientists did, they have taken one gene from a soil bacteria that is Bacillus thuringiensis and they had transferred that gene to the cotton plant. So, the cotton plant produced some toxins. So, that that insect which is the American ball worm, which mainly attack the cotton, they have not affected so much. So, it helped to reduce in the pesticide use in cotton also. But in organic farming, the GMO that is genetically modified organisms is not allowed. So, you have to there is some basic principle and ethos which type of crop and also you have to promote some traditional varieties which have very high insect and disease resistant activity. Because if these plants suppose in a new type of organic farming I taken a very hybrid type of tomato and one hectare area a farmers cultivated and there is some too much insect and pest attack maybe he is suffer a very lakhs and lakhs of rupees. So, initial time of organic farming, we also promote the varieties in the traditional varieties and different type of jamplasm. So, that if one loss is there for a particular system, he may get some profit and yield from the other system. So, farm management one is the crop rotation. I have already told different types of crop rotation what is we are followed. Similarly, there is the green mulching and other things if you see, this is a crop in our experimental field, we have grown previously here maize. And after that, we have grow different crop that is the French bean. But whatever we have can see in this picture, whatever the maize residue or maize stock is there, we have not throw outside the field. We, we put these thing in between our French bean lines. So what happened? It helped number one in the ra after the rainy season, it will conserve the soil moisture, reduce the evaporation loss. So you have not to put extra irrigation. And second, over the time it will decompose. So, whatever the nutrients this maize plant has taken from the system, it again going back to the soil. So, your nutrient, you have not to apply too much of organic manure in the next year if you are managing your farm this. There is a different type of intercropping and plantation program. Intercropping, now I want to tell. Suppose you are growing rice or maize. So, these are cereal crops, very heavy feeder, take lots of nutrient. But if you grow some other crops, legumes, in between this cereal, they can fix nitrogen. If you see, we have grown in our experiment, experimental field one line of maize and one line of soybean. So, maize will very high nutrient feeder they too and they will take nutrient from the surface layer while the soybean will take from the lower layer and this soybean also fix the nitrogen and certain part of nitrogen which is fixing by the soybean, this is very interesting seeing they are also supplied to their associated crop maize. So, this is called the sparing effect. By that we can manage our field very well and there are different type of intercropping is there. In my another lecture, I will also discuss in details. So, also the biological pest control. In organic farming, you cannot apply any insecticide or pesticide which is inorganic in nature, but you can use biological pest control. You can use lots of permitted some microorganisms we can you can apply your field. You can apply fruit fly trap, you can apply neem oil. You can also apply different type of extract of garlic and ginger and also there is a cow urine that is that's also very much insecticidal property. You can spray that cow urine in your crop. Similarly, sanitation. In organic farming, you have to always make your field very clean and neaty because in inorganic farming, there is some too much damage or insect pest, you can spray a high insecticide and you can control the pest. But in an organic when your choice is limited, you have to always visit the field, every time you have to monitor the field, wherever there is some insect pest or not. And the initial level, when their population is very low, it is very easy to control. But when it is come to the whole field, it is very tough. Similarly, mulching is there, I have so in the picture, 
maize stock is there and also the mulching we have done here. So, this will also help the not only the biodiversity they will increase, they will reduce the soil temperature also and the greenhouse gas emission. So, there is also different type of things which are applied the supplemental fertigation and bioresonal pesticides. Also, you have seen suppose in but in this condition there are lots of biological pest control is very much important. To control certain pest there are some organisms in every ecosystem there is a balance. Suppose just like the frog eat the insect, snake eat the frog and the eagle eat the uh, frog a snake. So, in this condition our balance is maintained. In case of field also there may be some insect, but there may be some other insects which prey upon them. So, we in organic farming we can promote this type of natural enemies that is called the natural insect which are the enemy of the other in disastrous or harmful insect we can control, but we have to very much sure that whenever using some any biological pest method it should not cross the limit and it should not just uh, make any disaster effect to the other organisms. So, there is lots of research is needed for this biological pest control before applying in the field. So, there are other main issues organic farming what is the standard. Inspection certification this is very much needed without the certification you cannot sell your market that is the accreditation input and market because ultimately your market will determine a farmer will grow certain organic farming or no. So, if we the different type of organic standards all over the world more than 60 what is the IOFAM that is most important and accepted that is the International Federation of Organic Agriculture and Movement for Europe that is the codex of European Union for maybe Japan that is JAS Japanese agricultural standards. Similarly, for our India our government of India has also specified some regulations and standards that is one is NPOP that is the national program for organic farming. So, there is a clear cut specification is given under organic farming in India which you can use, which cannot use and which you can restricted use. Similarly, APEDA that is agriculture and process food export development agency. So, there are guidelines when you have to sell your organic produce to other countries you have to that pro forma. So, this is the things for the conversion period what I will tell when you promote on agri organic agriculture from one to there. So, maybe initial period your yield level is little bit reduced for that. So, we have to make conversion period yield call that is not organic. After certain times, after maybe 3 or 4 years after completion of the organic far, just conversion period, you get the certification and you can sell in the market. So, initial time in the conversion time our government should also promote some time of subsidies and other things for farmers. So, the initial level they their profit as well as the yield is not reduced. So, but this duration is not fixed. The past use of the land, suppose in part, suppose you in a remote land of Orunachal Pradesh where farmers are already using very little fertilizer maybe less than 2 kilo per hectare and in the same condition a farmers of Punjab is 200 kilo per hectare. So, probably it is very easy within 1 year, 2 or 3 year easy very easy to change that Orunachal land to organic, but in case of Punjab it will take time. Definitely for crop, there are some crops suppose tomato, they are high yielding 20-30 ton. So, they need lot of nutrients and fertilizer, but some crops which is the legume crops they are very less feeder from the soil. So, that can be promoted in initial type of organic farming. So, conversion time always change. So, it is I am telling this is the different type of conventional to organic farming. You have to principally follow that is the time frame you have to make a maintain a record you have to go your farmers field, you have to all the standard regulation you have to follow. After that you can claim to a certification agency, they now uh, my farm is organic and you get the certification and you can sell in the market. So, there are different type of constraints and challenges in the organic farming. One is the low crop productivity during initial 3 to 4 years, yes, when you are going from inorganic agriculture to organic agriculture, maybe there is less yield in 3 to 4 years. Soil and plant enhancement issue, certification system. This certification system is very much needed, but they have some rules and regulation. So, you have to follow that. One is third party certification that is little bit costly and rules is there, but that is very much needed if you want to sell your produce in the international market. But for the domestic produce absolutely there is no problem. There is another certification government has initiated for the promotion for the farmers level that is PGS participatory guarantee scheme. In this a farmers make a group 
and with some laid down principles and regulation they can certify their farm, but that is limited for our domestic purposes. But we have a very much infrastructure facility we have relatively very less and we also need the value addition because a cheap packet is 10 rupees with just only less than 50 gram of potato, but a farmer is getting hardly 5 rupees a potato kilo. So, for organic produce, turmeric powder, ginger paste, value addition and processing is very much needed to get the profit. And there is, if you see this is the identify gaps, our uh, warehouse and transport is very less, cold chain facility, but lucky government is investing too much in this sector and probably in the coming future, we can in a better condition to do our process and value addition or organically produce to sell in the international market. So, this is the different initiative, NPO programs, standards and there is different type of quality testing laboratory has been established throughout the India to detect any pesticide residue not in the parts per million that is the PPM level, even the parts per billion that is the PPV level and this is the things. So, always we should promote integrated organic farming system in a system approach. So, you will be your cattle, you will be your pond fishery, you will be your fruit, you will be import, you will be your vegetable. So, a farmers can get all the things within his own farm and one output or byproduct of one plant can be used for the others. So, this is very much important by this model we can make our organic farming a profitable. This is our logo, if you see it is always called O this O mean organic, this is green, Matalab is always represent the nature and also the green color symbolizes the sustainable agriculture and healthy life. Thank you.